Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Hello, I'm Steve Burkowski, and this is your Golf Central update. And we start with some sad news as four time PGA Tour winner and the man who broke the color barrier at the Masters in 1975. Lee Elder passed away on Sunday at the age of 87. And over the next few minutes, we'll look back at the life, legacy, and impact Elder had on the game of golf. Born in Dallas, Texas in 1934, Elder was orphaned a decade later when his father was killed in World War II and his mother died soon after. Lee moved to Los Angeles, taking odd jobs at local golf courses, eventually reaching the PGA Tour in 1968 and knocking down one of sport's tallest racial barriers at 11.15 a.m. on April 10, 1975, when he became the first black player to compete in the Masters. Statement from Fred Ridley, chairman of Augusta National Golf Club in the Masters Tournament. We are deeply saddened to learn of the passing of Lee Elder, a friend of Augusta National and a true pioneer in the game of golf. Lee was an inspiration to so many young men and women of color, not only through his play, but also through his commitment to education and community. Lee will always be a part of the history of the Masters Tournament. His presence will be sorely missed, but his legacy will continue to be celebrated. Our thoughts and prayers are with Sharon and the entire Elder family. Also a statement from Jay Monahan, PGA Tour Commissioner, saying it's remarkable to look back on Lee's life and career and realize the hardships he endured and the sacrifices he made to reach golf's highest level and to have the success he had while paving the way for others to dream big and achieve is a testament to the type of man he was and how much talent he possessed the tour is profoundly grateful for the career of Lee Elder, and we extend our sincere sympathies to his family. Take a look at some of the career accomplishments for Lee Elder. Again, the first black player to complete, uh, compete, that is, in the Masters in 1975. Four-time PGA Tour winner, a member of the U.S. Ryder Cup team in 1979. Eight times a winner on the PGA Tour champions, and again, one of the honorary starters at the 2021 Masters Tournament. Lee Elder served alongside Jack Nicklaus and Gary Player as the 2021 Masters Honorary Starters. And Jack Nicklaus posted a series of tweets this afternoon saying, quote, Lee Elder was a pioneer in so many ways. Yes, he was the first black golfer to play in the Masters, but that simply underlined the hard work Lee put into furthering the cause of everyone who has a dream to play on the PGA Tour and thinks there were too many barriers before them. It was wonderful that the Masters and Augusta National paid a well-deserved tribute to Lee by inviting him to be an honorary starter on the last Masters that morning. You could see the joy in Lee's face, and Gary Player and I were honored to enjoy that moment with him. Lee was a good player, but most important, a good man who was very well respected by countless people. The game of golf lost a hero in Lee Elder. Barbara and I send our heartfelt condolences to Lee's wife, Sharon, and the entire family. The other honorary starter at the Masters this year, Gary Player, shared this note. I would like to send my deepest sympathies to Lee Elder's wife and family at this difficult time. Lee truly was a titan in the world of golf and a great contributor to society. He overcame a tremendous number of obstacles throughout his life, yet always remained gracious, and his courage and determination were inspiring. A fighter in every sense of the word, I will forever cherish his appearances at the Masters Ceremonial Tee Shot with Jack and I. Lee's impact on the sport and on my life will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, my friend. One of the many who was there to see that shot, Jaime yeah. Diaz, alongside. And when you talk about Lee Elder, a lot of people in 2021 might not know the man he was and what he meant to the game of golf when you heard the news. How do you maybe put in a perspective of what Lee Elder truly meant to the PGA Tour? Well, tragically, what today's going to mean is a greater appreciation for Lee Elder and everything that he did mean, uh, and sometimes it comes too late. But, you know, those who knew him and certainly those who watched golf carefully saw him as someone who was a model of perseverance and great dignity in the face of a lot of uh, obstacles. And he just kept, you know, he kept going in a way that was self-made but also uh, – tremendous talent he really was a really good player he didn't get out on that pga tour he was 33 and he won four times in pretty short order 
lost the playoff to Lee, uh, Lee Trevino. He lost the playoff to Jack Nicklaus. He, he beat Lee Trevino in the playoffs. So he's beaten some great players. And he was well-respected. We got that 1979 Ryder Cup team, which is one of the best ever. He was on it and a, and a good member. But I think what's going to be mem more memorable as people have greater awareness of the obstacles in front of black golfers in those days, blacks who wanted to become pro golfers, uh, the league they played in, the United Golf Association, because of the segregation at that time on the PGA Tour, uh, was a high level of play but didn't have a lot of advantages. There wasn't a lot of money. Uh, there wasn't a lot of great courses. There wasn't a lot of instruction. A lot of self-made guys who had you know, homemade swings that worked because they worked hard at it and they were talented athletes. Um, but then, you know, he also hustled with Titanic Thompson, you know, so he had a very colorful background, very well-rounded in the sense of, you know, knowing how to be a self-sufficient player and, and finding a way somehow. And then when he got on that tour, he, he did okay. And then I think one of the, I think, uh, a validator of his, of how good he was, he had a pretty distinguished, uh, at that time, senior tour career, PJ Tour champions. He won eight times. So, you know, he was an underrated player. Uh, but, you know, I do think that when you're talking about um, the great accomplishment, it's, it's really about where he started from. He rose higher than many players with greater records because he started from such a disadvantaged position. And I think that's why he'll be in the Hall of Fame eventually. And how difficult was it for Lee Elder, the challenges that he truly faced and Rich Lerner touched on? Yeah. It wasn't an easy path for him away from the golf course. Not at all. I mean, obviously, he, you know, he's orphaned, one of nine kids. He was brought up by his aunt. Uh, there were a lot of things. He, and one of the things, when he started getting better, he said one of the great challenges was just feeling like you belonged, like you were going to be good enough, because your whole life everybody's telling you you're not going to make it, or they're putting you know, barriers in front of you, and you always feel as if you're an outsider. And he had to learn you know, to feel like he was good enough and that he had the game, and it took him a while. He, he thought that was really, in talking to him, I remember he talked about Johnny Miller playing with him when Johnny was 19 years old in the 1966 U.S. Open. No real reason that Johnny Miller would have been someone who, you know, would have been considering victory, but he was because he was such a confident kid and he'd just been brought up with all this positive reinforcement. Total opposite from Lee Elder. And he goes, and here's Lee Elder, much older, and going, I need what that kid's got. But it was harder for black players to have that because golf as an institution was not encouraging them in a way that made them feel like they belonged or that they could believe in themselves becoming great. His legacy now and maybe how it changes after his passing, what would it be? I think his legacy will be as one of the all-time great, you know, black golfers at a time when you started to realize with history's perspective that those guys were really good and got very far with very little advantage. And so, relatively speaking, we should respect that achievement more. And then also the way he continually mentored and pioneered for those behind him. Uh, I think quietly he did it in a way that has lasting value. And I think when he got, you know, the Bob Jones Award, that was great validation. And uh, when he was on that first tee at Augusta National, he became more of a symbol. So I think he's going to go down as one of the pivotal figures in the progression of the improvement of the black golfer. I mean, wonderful perspective. Earlier today, the DP World Tour, formerly known as the European Tour, put out this statement saying, we are very saddened by the passing of Lee Elder, a pioneer who leaves a lasting legacy in our game. Our thoughts and condolences are with his family and friends at this time. The LPGA Tour released this statement this morning saying, quote, we are saddened to learn the passing of Lee Elder. He was the definition of a trailblazer and his impact on the game of golf will never be forgotten.